iniciar, entonces, We're going to get started el primer entrenamiento del Día Mundial de with Migración. the first training on the World Migratory Birthday 2024. Welcome to everyone that is joining, finding the time to be with us today. It may be a little late for some of you, but this is the first training from DMAM. It's going to help us go deeper into the topic of the protection of birds and insects. The World Migratory Birthday prepares each day trainings, specific trainings for educators that celebrate World Migratory Birthday in communities, in schools, in universities, and all over communication media, such as So as part of the World Migratory Birthday, we're going to open this webinar with a special guest who's visiting us from Venezuela. She is the Dr. Jasmine Contreras from Club de Observadores de Mariposas from Venezuela, which is a, a very similar birthing activity, bird watchers. Um, this is in the case of butterflies. So we're going to learn from butterflies and how through the conservation of birds, we could achieve the preservation of insects. All right. So we're going to get started. This presentation is going to be available in all of our educational spaces. I'm going to leave this link open so you can use this presentation in the future in a series of different mechanisms that you may be able to use in your spaces. To use this presentation, we need to recognize the talent of this artist of this presentation. We're going to learn how to use that name. And we can also adapt ourselves to understand the names and learn the names of these species on the local way that they are being named. In this way, you can offer educational materials in a free, unpriced manner. So in order to remind all of you in the chat, in this webinar, we have the simultaneous interpretation available. In some cases, it will be from English into Spanish, others into Spanish from English. So um, those that need the interpretation because they are not bilingual, please try to find the interpretation icon, which is a globe at the bottom part of your Zoom navigation bar, and select the language that you want to listen to. So again, it's about the conservation of birds and insects, and of course, the resources needed for them to survive. It's about conserving their food, their habitat, and promote a better education of people when it comes to their relationship to these winged beings. So, World Migratory Birthday has, as in this year, in 2024, the topic of how to protect insects and how to protect birds. So, we're going to try to bring this up for everyone in a way that it is adaptable for everybody's local spaces and local situation. Please make sure that your microphones are off so that this presentation does not get interrupted. Las, los insectos son importantes por muchas razones. Y entre insects ellas, las... are very important for many reasons, and amongst them are the services that they provide to the ecosystem and, in consequence, to the well-being of human beings. Insects are pollinators 
by default, and many of them have evolved to relate specifically with a type of plant. It is estimated that over 85% of pollinators of flowers are insects. These animals, even though they're small, they have huge level of um, need to feed themselves. That is why they become sort of controllers of populations of plants. To this process, it is called uh, a sort of herbivore energy. Anyway, these insects are also the source of food for many other species, mainly birds, maybe some reptiles, some frogs, even spiders and fish. These can be fed by insects and are part of their diet. Insects not only feed from fruits and plants, they have a very important part in the cycle of the recycling of nutrients, meaning the insects could bring about the decomposition of animals. So in this way, they help the cycle by degrading. They help the cycle of nutrients and they rejuvenate the habitats in this way because they bring about the components that are needed to degrade. They're a source of food as well themselves because it's not just animal. In some cultures, insects are quite important part of the diet. These become important elements of the diet in spaces like Brazil, the Amazon, or Mexico, for example. Sometimes it could be also some ants, also the honey that comes from bees, grasshoppers, they are become favorites in Mexican diet. So thanks to all of these characteristics that insects present, they can help us improve our agricultural systems. In many occasions, these insects could also become a plague in some agricultural systems, but they can also be beneficial. It is believed that insects can improve the amount and the quantity of the fruits of our crops. And they also help help us avoid the use of pesticides because they can become themselves controllers as a natural mechanism to not allow other species of insects to become a plague. We have here two examples of local birds that are part of the examples of what is being celebrated in World Migratory Bird Day 2024. We have the Nakunda Nighthawk, Chordelius Nakunda. They are seen usually at dusk or dawn. Their favorite food are beetles and cicadas. They like to search for these insects in reproduction areas. And they depend on larvae of mosquitoes and flies that live around bodies of water or wetlands or marshes even. This allows them to grow better quality of feathers and give them the nutrients to do so. It is estimated that many of the populations of migratory birds have been lost, specifically those that feed of insects and forest species are declining specifically from 
Basically, it's a difference of 2.9 billion elements in the last 50 years have been lost. This is a very scary number because for us as conservators makes us think about the services, the ecosystemic services that insects provide to birds and other animals and what would happen if they disappear. So we need to know insects. And in this graph here, we're learning a little bit about the good aspects of an insect. Like, for example, they have two antennas. They hold they either have as mouth parts they have six legs their body is segmented it has the head the thorax and the abdomen <laughs> and many insects not all of them have two pair of wings and also, some of these wings are covered. Sometimes they do not present this, but sometimes they do. These uh, membranes are called elytra. This is also, they also have this exo exoskeleton that interacts with the environment for processes like breeding, reproduction, and thermal regulation. Insects fulfill a cycle that is known as metamorphosis. where they go through different stages from being an egg all the way to becoming an adult insect. They could remain at a certain of these stages as nymphs, and they can remain, for example, grasshoppers. They have this egg phase, and then a very tiny grasshopper is born and they start to grow, but without changing their morphology. So it really depends on the insect, the different stages and how long they stay in those. The classic types of insects are known as the larvae, like caterpillars, also dragonflies these are examples on the left that present the characteristics that we just presented the larvae have heads and the heads in their abdomen and it's sort of connected to the thorax or part of the thorax some of them observe three pairs of legs and um, what you see here are the spiders on the right side of the graph these are called they're not considered part of the same class but they're all important for the birds. Many of these no feed off their webs. They build their own webs. But it's not so... It is important to know the differences when we're educating about their importance because we can become a little confused. Some insects have different morphologies and others have similar morphologies. The ones we have in the left we have the moth that it's called the hummingbird moth. It sort of looks like a hummingbird. So 
they adapt their mouth parts to emulate the same way as a bird to get the nutrients out of the flowers. So it looks like they have a peak. Others, you know, they emulate a venomous caterpillars. So again, nature has a way to survive. So that's why they, we can get confused with one another. Where do birds and insects live? Well, you can find them everywhere. Urban areas, forests, shorelines, coastal areas, wetlands, marshes, grasslands. Also in open areas where you can view aerial behavior, but they can also hold terrestrial behavior. You can also find them in field farms and crop areas. Unfortunately, pesticides and insecticides are bringing about the declining of the populations of insectivorous birds. There's even areas with high concentration where bird populations can decline up to 3.5% annually. This is the product of pollution that comes from these chemicals. This can be pollution that you see in chicks or the food that is left behind for human consumption and plants in general. So the threats of insects and birds are explained in this graph, in this slide. There is an excessive use of chemicals in field farms. So the introduction of invasive species, also monocropping, transformation from organic crops to monocrops is a big threat for insects and birds. Of course, again, urbanization and climate change in general with the change in temperature. Temperatures are raising as a product of even the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So some of the actions that we can take on and you can learn to apply with your different audiences is through some basic activities people can actually start doing. For example, reducing the use of pesticides, planting native gardens. Native gardens are less expensive than maintaining a ornamental type of garden. Also, we need to leave litter, maintain the, a ground cover that provides important nutrients and cover for insects. We want to motivate people to maintain that sort of refuge space, you know, by leaving those dry leaves on the ground, just leave them spaces for them to take refuge. And we want you to share these messages with those that are decision makers in your area, in your localities. That way we can take on a big amount of activities in this same direction. And we want to thank the supporting of World Migratory Bird Day and these organizations that are helping us with producing materials for our campaigns that will be happening in May and in October. So why World Migratory Bird Day? This action is for educators of birds. It has a spirit of international conservation and it transcends borders. 
we want to make sure that all educators through education multiply the voices in order to produce changes and shifts in the understanding. In this way, support the well-being of the native fauna towards a better life for future generations, mainly because it helps protect these sp spaces where these birds live and spaces that we share with them as well as their migratory routes needed. So who coordinates World Migratory Bird Day? It's right now being coordinated by four organizations, the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals, the African Eurasian Migratory Water Bird Agreement, Environment, and the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership. The World Migratory Bird Day is usually celebrated the second Saturday of May, which is the time where most birds are flying towards the North Pole, where they reproduce. And this is also the celebration of the migration of spring. And it's also on the second Saturday of October, which is where birds come back to their sites of rest where they spend the winter in tropical areas. This occurs twice, officially twice a day. Nonetheless, we motivate educators to celebrate World Migratory Day any day of the year, whatever day that works for you. A moment where you can see birds present in your community, where maybe logistics are easier and more favorable for you to feel comfortable with sharing this message. Each year, World Migratory Bird Day offers topics of conservation and invites people to join voices to take on this call to many audiences, diverse audiences, and in this way, produce certain influence towards the change of behavior that we need in order to conserve birds and as we can see in this slide, we have touched on topics like the pollution through plastics, um, light pollution, the importance of water, amongst others. And for each topic of conservation, we select a series of diverse bird species. And in this year, for the first time, they selected a series of diverse insects as well. And a series of a species of insects. So I invite you to be alert because in the next two webinars, we will be talking about the life of one of them in a specific. Um, this art that we're seeing here, these illustrations um, bring about the participation of artists coming from different countries with different styles and different proposals. And this year, we're very proud to share the art and talent of the artist for 2024, Anna Rose, who is a biologist uh, in her master's right now in the University of Ohio. She also studies the relationships of insects to bird nests. Anna is a very talented young woman that illustrated all of these slides and materials that are available for all of you to adapt to your events and for you to use them and share. The poster of World Migratory Birds Day, Bird Day, Birds Day in America 2024 is showing right now in your screen. These are a very important species uh, migratory species and some very important insects for them. Where can I find all these materials? You can find them in this link that we're sharing. It's also going to be placed right now in the chat. And we invite you to explore all of these materials that are available for all of you in English, Spanish, and soon enough in Portuguese and French as well. These materials are quite diverse, coloring pages, stickers, 
posters, a series of communication notes pre-designed to share all of this in the social networks. So we invite you to explore all of these resources and go ahead and organize your events so you can register them in our global event map and share them with your communities. We will be sharing more information in the coming webinars and share with you that ideas are diverse. Everybody are welcome to share and you know, new ideas that may not be in our educational resources, you can learn here and adapt them to your locality. What has become quite famous are these bird masks. They have traveled all over the continent and the hemisphere, and you can see the creativity of students, educators, and people in general attending to these events. And to start wrapping up, I want to just share with you some simple ways to protect insects and protect birds at your home. Sort of to take the message a little further, leave the leaves. We don't have to leave them for months, but for a few weeks, we can let them find cover and shelter there when the climate becomes unfavorable. Also, plant native. Native insects do better with their native plants. So we invite you to change your regular garden and try to find native flowers that could feed those insects and therefore help the birds. We have an example here, how a manicured lawn looks like versus a natural lawn with low maintenance. So a manicured lawn implies a lot of maintenance and a lot of money and a lot of chemicals. Again, we want to make sure that we dim your lights, our lights in our external areas of our houses. In this way, we avoid that the insects fly around without, you know, they become vulnerable because they're trapped in these lights around the gardens. And again, what everybody share in this webinar the passion for teaching and sharing this information in the community and also all these very, very basic and simple actions that we could all take upon even within our families there's also some insect events that are happening constantly around us in our communities. And I invite you to explore and share with us which would be these insect events if you were to watch for and research about. There's a great news coming up in the U.S. that after hundreds of years where billions of cicadas, however you call call them commonly or locally. These are insects that live for a very long time underground. And then at the moment they start reproducing, they emerge. And they believe that this year in particular, we could witness the emergence of the cicadas in the United States, almost 200 years after their first apparition. And we may also look at some, what they call beater, beetle butterflies. And if you do happen to know about this and you happen to be near them, please share that with us because we want to know what is going on everywhere. Again, I want to share again with you that the team for the World Migratory Birthday are located in ev every single part of the hemisphere and the Americas. Please try to reach out to request educational materials, teaching materials, 
also if you have an idea if you have created through some creative ideas something that may be of help to others please share that with us Laura Mundial de las Aves Migratorias en el Caribe Leticia Andino Leticia Andino se encuentra en El Salvador coordinando América Central eh, yo me encuentro en Caracas, Venezuela coordinando eh, Suramérica Laura is in El Salvador coordinating Central America Daniela Sousa will be available in Mexico. I myself am in Caracas, Venezuela, and our team for communications, graphic design, and sales is also available. That would be Alex Julu and Dace. Finally, to conclude this introduction of our webinar, we want to thank you all, our participants and our sponsors to make for the possibility to make this spaces available to people and i also i want to give a warm welcome to our guest today jasmine who is the coordinator of the observa um, observatory group of birds and butterflies this group came together with the sole objective of watching butterflies and observe them this group is going to be very helpful to help us collaborate as well. If you are to know of an observatory group in your area, you can contact Jasmine to know more. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you. Hope everybody's doing well. Thank you for the invitation from Venezuela, from a little town called San Antonio de los Altos. Today, I am going to share part of the experience that we have lived through this initiative of the Observers of Butterfly in Venezuela, which is our group. Okay, I'm taking out my presentation and let's go with Jasmine. Please, Jasmine, tell us a little bit about your previous experience. Why is it that you started observing butterflies? And what message do you want to share with the public that will be listening to you today? Okay, I'm a professor of biology. It is my first degree. And then I did graduate studies on entomology. And it's always been a preoccupation, a concern of mine that we see insects as this group of animals with this label that, you know, they're a plague and we need to kill them all. And a lot of what we learn in graduate studies in entomology is that from a perspective of the control of insect, insects, we know that some of them do become plagues and transmitters of diseases, but uh, also the ecosystemic benefits of this group is humongous, as you just pointed out in your presentation. So from this concern, I always loved insects since I was a little girl, but I specialize in a special group, which is butterfly. But in general, in all of the insect groups that are around butterflies. Again, um, there was this initiative that came from the Observers Club of Butterflies in Venezuela, coming again from a club of observers in Argentina that was brought together during the pandemic. So we started integrating a series of ideas while we were all at home and I was reading a lot myself. I found this initiative and I said, why don't we replicate something similar here in Venezuela? And so after the pandemic, we started working with the activity that we always do with the communities. Uh, for example, the Colocoras restaurant. This is a space that exists in a park in Venezuela in the Caracas uh, capital city. And now it's called Parque Miranda before it used to be called Parque of the West, of the East, sorry, and in a program that is called Conscious Walks, and of course, from the Pedagogical University, 
where I work uh, as a professor in zoology and entomology, we kind of put together this club and we call it like that. And we have this phrase, which is a path towards citizen science and environmental education. Excellent, Jasmine. Go ahead with your presentation then. Thank you. As you can see, our experience has been very beautiful. And next, here we have our purposes. The one that I want to share with you is this one about producing a community of exchange where a series of different actors of society can connect to promote the valorization, the valuing, care, and preservation of butterflies as well as other pollinator insects. We want to bring about the experience of well-being through the observation, contemplation, and learning of natural spaces in Venezuela. And part of our um, we have a series of uh, slogans or mottos like this one that is called, we are with nature. Also, we have this idea that we are more than an experience of learning. And we started in this, we are more than a learning experience program by meet and learn, observe and apply and liberate and value. The first one is about, you know, educational talks and conservation, uh, con conversation, sorry, where we relate them to the natural history of butterflies. Then we go to the field and we observe, we identify and we apply what we have learned. And at the end, we liberate uh, butterflies and we value the importance of biodiversity and their conscious relationship between human beings and nature. So, through these three moments, you know, once we had gone to the field and captured them very carefully to observe them and identify them, then we get to that part where we liberate them and start valuing them. So once we do that, we get to connect with them and relate to them. Let's go to the next one, please. Okay, so there's uh, there's an identification of hosts and nectarious plants and or of butterflies and other pollinators, and a lot of the observations here in Venezuela we haven't actually done it with so much um, depth in the park. Here you can see my sister with my little niece with a plant that we actually call her a name. Her name is Fighter. And right now it's huge, but it's giving a home to the monarch butterfly. And one of the beautiful things that we were able to find in the park, as well as others, are examples like this. So next, we also put together monthly meetings where we meet and uh, have conversations about what we call citizen science and environmental education. So in these meetings, we work on environmental education. We also teach them taxonomy. We tell them about their cycles of life, mainly everything that has to do with Lepidoptera species. We also call on artists, architects, I mean, even accountants joined in these meetings, people, you know, elderly, people that are retired, and they love this activity. They join us and they contribute so much. Next. And of course, we get into the observation, counting, and identification of butterflies species. We either watch them as larvae, we identify those are adults, we start writing this observation on series of lists that we put together monthly, 
And also in our platform, we have this project called Butterflies of the Great Caracas. This is in the platform already. That's exactly where we start incorporating all the information coming from the observations to produce a database for Venezuela, specifically on observed species of, of butterflies in the park and on a national level. We also conduct field trips to museums, private parks, private gardens, as you can see here in the pictures. And it just brings so much joy to us. And as Miguel was saying, we meet in this observation to uh, with other observers of birds. Here in Venezuela, the, you know, birding is celebrated on September the 2nd. So we join and we observe together. Some of us, we observe butterflies and others are observing birds. And this has been a very, very gratifying experience for all of us. Next. One of the products and achievements that we've had is the elaboration of a pocket guide. This pocket guide allows us to bring a diagnosis of the species of butterflies in Venezuela. So we identified those in the national territory and along with the information we found in the platform iNaturalists, you know, and the experience of those helping us to produce this pocket guide, Dr. Maldonado and myself, also staff from the MISA, which is the Agricultural Museum, as well as the entomology of USB University here in Venezuela. So along with a platform coming from Rio Verde, we help and collaborated all of us together in the university. And we produced this pocket guide, which is a very pedagogical, experimental and liberating experience for all of us. Uh, and we want to share that with you because this is how we promote the biodiversity of our country. Next. And of course, one of our favorite activities is to produce meaningful learning. So we invite people to spaces, gardens, schools. Here we have a garden called the Potepui and there's a series of educational activities that happen there, the same with that restaurant I mentioned. And people from all ages, you know, children, elderly, youth, everybody participates generating this learning process around insects and promoting environmental values and, you know, sort of changing that labels that we hold towards insects and people, you know, in this activities are actually able to dare and touch larvae or touch and feel certain insects like beetles and learn how to take care of them and not hurt them. Next. And amongst some of the activities, one of the newest ones is, you know, support community service students in Venezuela. Community service is an activity that is a requisite to become, um, to, pr to finish your bachelor degree. So through this process, uh, they become uh, voluntary, voluntary work that bring to the club to our club of observers. So in this way, they help us bring and produce a better experience for students. Sometimes they stay with us, you know, they become kind of permanent members uh, of our voluntary staff team. And we've also had the opportunity last year in September, we, celebrated our first anniversary and we had this really beautiful activity where we exchanged with colleagues on a national level and also international and we sort of shared about our um, similar activities we shared the event with dr rodriguez rodrigo solis 
who is a representative of the Iberfly platform in Canada, um, explained us how to use this platform. We also had um, people from Argentina, uh, people that have been our great inspiration and in the, the program we tried to emulate in Venezuela. We also were able to work with Associate India from Spain. They have 16 years of work behind them. Uh, we also have the Professor Clavijo who explained to us the observation of moths and butterflies and also the pilot and biologist, Magister Indiana. So it's been a great experience. It has been not only academic experience, but also a very much promotion activity. And again, regular citizens of Caracas and different areas of our country, we're trying to inspire them to become what we call green citizens. So we inspire the regular citizen on ecological topics and produce a network, a network uh, that brings about a community that makes our work possible. They become collaborators. You know, we were actually able to receive a piece of silk to help us produce, um, you know, meshes for our work. And this has been also a very integrative experience because he hasn't just brought about biology and entomology, but also art and community services. And this has even turned, I would say, into a loving experience. So amongst the direct beneficiaries, so far, we've had 322 people that have been directly affected through our activities. We had 17 events and over 20 um, conversatories. Next. In Instagram right now, in our account that I invite you to follow, called our, at Com Venezuela. We have right now 889 followers where we share our activities. We also have a WhatsApp group and a virtual library through Telegram. You can also find us there where we have many references from other countries and they can help us in learning how to have this uh, identification on a taxonomy level. Again, Experiencia Com in Venezuela, it's an integrative experience. It's comprehensive because we have welfare, we have learning, and we have science. So this is something that we believe it allows us to go in our consciousness and integrate our knowledge to become better people and also take care and value our planet. So I will wrap up with this. Thank you very much. This is a picture with members of our club that are always every month in our activities. Some of them are in this call, like Veronica. Thank you so much, Dr. Jasmine, for your participation today. Precisely, right? We want to promote in this first webinar how bird observers can join with butterfly observers and bring together very educatable, educative information sobre los grupos entomológicos locales and, and que seguro van a dar un toque so especial. We invite you all to estar preparando to para celebrar el día type of because they're probably just waiting or are about to promote and or announce their own World Migratory Birthday event. So with this, we can wrap up the presentation by Jasmine, and we want to open up the opportunity to leave a question in the chat. We will be responding directly through the email that you share with us, and that way also open up the possibility for us to invite you directly 
to the next webinar, which will be around the same time each Thursday. Let me look and read some of these questions. You can contact us directly. I'm going to leave my email here for those that are interested in attending. This is mostly for people that want to go to events in South America. And I will also invite my coordinators in this call to help us share our email according to the region. We have an email for Central America, one for the Caribbean, and one for South America. There's my email. Congratulations, doctor. You have many congratulation messages. We're going to analyze all of these comments to pick up on the questions and give a follow-up with educators for the coming webinars. We have very few weeks until May, but meanwhile, we will have a special topic each Thursday. And in all of these talks, we will be talking about how to collaborate with entomologists, how to bring together knowledge from birds and insects, what considerations, theoretical ones are needed according to the audience that we're talking to. We will also have one that is about the live specifically of a few species. And finally, we will have one about a strategies, you know, how to become uh, better at communicating all your materials in different media. We have officially fulfill a whole hour, so we will let you go now. We hope to see you again in the next webinar. Again, this webinar will be available in our YouTube channel, both in English and in Spanish. We are also going to be sharing this presentation in PDF format in the Trello session, which is our website. Thank you very much. Congratulations. We have over a hundred educators connected from all over the hemisphere. So this is as far as we go. May you all have a beautiful night.